today the topic of discussion is gender dimension of power now in international relations power is an important determinant which has its influence on any decision making now what is power power is the ability to influence the behavior and values of others now for example there are two actors a and b if a is successful in influencing the behavior of b or the value system of b then a is more powerful than b the gender dimension of power is a new area which has been provided by the feminists and they have added a version to the study of international relations according to the feminists international relations is the relation between states and other non state actors but the relationship has always been among patriarchal bodies in the form of states or non state actors the main proponents of this version of power that is the gender version of power are cynthia enlo j and tinker rebecca grant christine sylvester and many others they have provided a new version a new perspectives to the study of international relations which was not known or given importance earlier normally international relations is a top down approach analysis it looks at the state from the international level the role of the states are very important in this international behavior the feminists have brought a new version which is called the feminist version of international relations which is against the male stream version of international relations the feminists say that since the origin of international relations as a new discipline it has been studied from the angle of men the version of women were missing and it has been seen that the feminists have given a bottom up approach where they have emphasized the role of the individual the role of the community the role of the state and their influence in international decision making they have tried to show that gender is very much an important determinant in global politics the theoretical foundation of international relations have always been male the male female dichotomy has been there where female has been considered as the other early work of feminist international relations they have studied power from a different angle and it started very much in the 1980s they have tried to peel off the masculinist surface of world politics to reveal its key gendered dynamics the realist school in international relations have said that the behavior of the state is very much dependent on human nature which are always trying to survive and in order to survive it is always trying to increase its own power and trying to decrease the power of the other the concept of the state is heavily gendered we have to remember today the if we count the number of women heads of states or the number of women heads of governments we find that the number is very low very few countries have women finance ministers or women acting as foreign policy decision makers so from here we can see the states are actually been run by men so the versions the perspective of men is found even in international relations so we have to emphasize a point here by rebecca grant 
the reminder that the formation of ancient Grecian state was a patriarchal behavior to subordinate women's labor within the family. The domestic sphere has always been devalued and it has been shown that women are fit for the domestic sphere. Their contribution to the public sphere is not that important. Now the states are the expression of the patriarchal power. Normally when there are token representation of women as heads of states or important decision makers, their voice will not be heard in the international level. So many states have understood the importance of the voice of women and have started providing some amount of reservation in the governments of their countries so that their voices are not silenced. The state even today has a legitimate right to use force through police and military. States at times give so much importance to national security that the individual security is affected. National security versus individual security, if this becomes important, then the worst sufferers are the individuals and among the individuals, it is the women and the children who are the worst sufferers. Carolyn Nordstrom had studied war firsthand and in this particular research, it was seen that the most the worst victims of any war are the children and then the women. But the children and the women, they do not have any say in decision making in war. Behind the rhetoric of the soldier fighting another soldier for protecting the interests of the country, it is actually that the children are maimed, tortured, starved, forced to fight or go under extreme levels of exploitation. As a society, the voices which are protesting, they remain silent and at times they are taught not to see anything which they are not supposed to see. War leads to suffering, death, injury, displacement, deprivation and it has been found that internationally also the impact of war has not been very good in the long run. During war the exploitation of the women folk go on because in war women are set to be thought as the icon and the enemy tries to demoralize the people, the army, by exploiting the women of that country. Cynthia Enloe has studied the contribution of women in international relations in a more diverse manner, not only relating to the direct state relationship. She has said that women play a very important role in military. They also play important role as military wives, as domestic service workers in the export processing zone. And she has emphasized that we need to study international relations from a bottom-up approach and from a multi-level approach. The contribution of women in war is immense according to her. Even during the Second World War, when men went to fight, the jobs were taken over by women so that the country does not suffer in the long run. But after the war was over, the women were sent signals that they need to leave the job and go back to their homes and continue with their own domestic work. Their contribution was not much recognized in the domestic sphere or in the international level because for every country, if the women do not play an important role, then the men cannot go ahead. 
For example, in India, the freedom struggle, we know that there were very many women who played an important role in supporting the freedom fighters directly or indirectly. And if these women were not there, India would not have got independence so easily. But soon after independence, we find that in the government, there were very few women or very few women who were visible in the public domain. So these are things which the feminists and in international relations try to show that when decision making is done, it is very necessary that the perspective of the women have to be taken in. Another point in the gender dimension of war is the role of women in military. Many countries in the world have allowed women to be part and parcel of the military, but it has been restricted and many have not allowed them into combat role. Now, there are two aspects in feminism. One strand supports the role of women in military and even in combat role. But the other feminist version or the strand, they emphasize that women should not fight in wars that have been created by men. Cynthia N. Lowe had brought in a very important point of personal is international. That is, the sufferings with the women may be facing in the domestic spheres can be an important point in international discussions. When we talk of security, normally it is always a perspective of power which is from the top-down level. Rebecca Grant has stated that the initial gendered separation of the public and the private sphere in organization of state and society produced an exclusively male concept of citizenship. It was thought that the men are the defenders of the state and they are the ones who will acquire privileged and active status in national life. And what about the women? They are invisible. They did not participate in decision-making, nor did they have access to state machinery. The macho soldier, we, which we normally say, is a image, an image of a man, a youth who is there to protect the lives of the vulnerable people. The exclusion of the women from armed forces have been done and many a times it is the men in the military who have opposed the entry of women in the military services. The definition of security or the definition of power is very broad in the gender dimension of power. It is not limited to the security of the state. It is in terms of a holistic way of looking at security. It includes the physical and the economic security of individuals. The international feminists have also focused on the international division of labor. And with the coming in of globalization, it has been found that many a times contractualization of jobs are being done. Now, with the contractualization of jobs, we find that women are losing most of the jobs. The security of the erstwhile era is going. And the feminists believe that it is very necessary that the definition of security is diminution of all forms of violence, whether physical, economic or ecological. So in order to be happy, in order to have a positive international scenario, it is not only that power is th seen from a material resource perspective, it is something which includes abstract things. It includes the economic aspects, it includes the ecological aspects and it has been told 
every time that the bottom up approach will improve the position of the states and the non state actors in the international scenario in many countries in the world today the state violence is a problem and in many other countries also we find that the military budget is increasing every year when the military budget increases it means that the budget for the development is decreasing the security seeking behavior of the states legitimated by its association with certain type of masculinity are always striving for more power and in this drive for more power they are trying to amass lots of armaments and this fight or this competition to have more armaments is ultimately having a very negative impact on the overall human development of the country the military play a very important role in every country that is very much acceptable and the military while training its soldiers try to denigrate anything that is considered feminine the image of a soldier is of an individual who is there to protect the vulnerable during war the heroic masculine warrior fights against the enemy now when united states went on for war in afghanistan it partially justified a heroic intervention of helpless afghani women and children as if the us had gone to afghanistan to protect the rights human rights of the women and children who were the vulnerable group on the other side the taliban was trying to prove that the women of the area needs to be protected from outside influence so they are fighting the war in order to protect the women from the outside influences so both sides in the conflict justified using the feminized imagery of the other now the images of masculinity of war renders women's role in war invisible or as patriotic and supportive mother wife and daughter in every war there are women who play who are really playing an important role because as nurses as doctors as people who are there behind the scene there are innumerable women but when wars are won it is the men who get all the recognition the opposition from the military at times come in when women are allowed to come into the military sites during the 1990s after the uh, cold war we found that there was relative peace in the north and another feature that came out during that time was a less militarized models of masculinity got importance during this time we found that global businessmen were becoming the new heroes they were moving around with suitcases instead of bullets this softer image of masculinity is possible in peaceful times but incident of 11 september 2001 this was a date which brought in a great change the softer images of masculinity ended on this day post 911 the war of terrorism began and this militarized masculinity came back in vogue it became very important that the state needed to show the tough look so that it could play an important role in protecting the vulnerable citizens against the terrorists normally during peace time when conciliation is gone into it is normally considered as weak and not according to national interest 
In the international arena, the leaders need to be tough. They need to show that they are not ready to give up their national interest or they are not ready to compromise at any angle. Conciliation negotiations are not considered to be very macho. Now, we have to think that the role of international peacekeeping forces. The international peacekeeping forces go into areas where there are problems, civil wars. And it is the role of this peacekeeping force to bring in peace and help the civil society in the region to remain in a pacific manner and not go into civil war again. Here we have found that women are playing an important role in the peacekeeping forces. Indian peacekeeping forces who have gone to Liberia or the Bangladeshi women who have gone to other countries of Africa, they have been really appreciated by the people of that area. They have been able to build trust among the warring groups in the region and they have brought in a positive image of women who are in peacekeeping dimension. Whenever there is ethnic conflict, we have seen the women are the soft targets. And as we always know, this leads to the demoralization of the community. The human rights abuses and the military threats go on. And internationally, if we see, we find 80% of the refugees and the displaced person will be children and women. It is very necessary to understand the perspective of this group of people who are really facing problem in the day-to-day -day lives. Without understanding the version of this vulnerable group, proper decision making is not possible. And gender dimension of power wants to focus on the point or highlight on the point that, that the power concept needs to be understood in a more holistic manner. There have been positive impact of feminist scholarship and in 1985 gender has been considered as an integrate part in the design of refugee relief programs. Even in areas where there have been environmental calamities, it has been found that women have played an important role as environmental custodians or managers. For example, in India, women have played an important role in the Chipko movement or the Silent Valley movement in order to protect environment. So international relations or the power dimension is not only having war, it is about living a happy life so that everyone gets the basic aspects like food, clothing, shelter and a dignity to live a life in their own way. After the Bosnian conflict, um, rape has been considered as a war crime. The United Nations has recognized it and the United Nations Development Program has redefined human security. Now, it is not a limited version of security. It is a broader one and it includes economic security, access to food and health services, personal security, political security and participation in community life. International relations is no more a top-down study or it is no more limited to the patriarchal version of study of relation between state and other states. It is a subject which is dealing with human beings and as they are dealing with human beings, it is the betterment of the lives of the human beings which are very necessary and among this 
whole population 50% are women so the perspective of the women needs to be taken in in decision making at the state level or at the international level there's a need to redefine power and national interest differently it is necessary to be more sensitive to the social costs of conflict wars can be won but the impact of the war on the ordinary citizens can be really dangerous and it is very necessary that international relations as a subject gives focus on power from a broader definition where power is not only limited to security of the state not only limited to more power or the state being a self egoist in trying to survive it is going for any destruction destruction of other countries destruction of human settlements destruction of environment it is necessary to look at power in a broader way so that power can be utilized in order to help the people who are really in a helpless situation